Today we're going to use the parametric features of amperes to show how you can analyze and optimize permanent magnet sensors. And we're going to discuss both variable reluctance and Hall type sensors. And we can use the same model. A model we'll use will be of a rotating gear, which we see here, uh, this large structure, which is sort of a blue-gray color with alternating slots and teeth as our gear. And then we have a permanent magnet sensor above it. I'm going to zoom in so that you have a better view of the permanent magnet sensor. So the green part is the permanent magnet material. And I'll just show you the direction of magnetization. Now we have a little coordinate indicator down here. You can see that in this model the up direction is in the y direction and that's the way our magnet is magnetized. So we have permanent magnet and then we have a pole piece. You can just see it and it's mostly hidden by this coil which is transparent. So the coil is essential for the variable reluctance sensor but it wouldn't be present in a Hall type sensor. So I'm just going to hide that coil now to give you a better view of the pole piece. So there you can see the pole piece is directly aligned with the gear tooth and as the gear rotates the pole piece will become aligned with the slot then a tooth again and so on and so forth. So what we'll do at each angular position of the parametric rotation we will have the program calculate the flux linkage of the coil and also we'll assume that there's some sort of a hall sensor at the bottom of this pole piece so we'll just calculate the strength of the magnetic field, the B field, just a little bit below the pole piece. So that way in the same parametric run as we're varying the angle of the gear we're simulating both a variable reluctance sensor and a hall sensor. Now before doing that though we're going to try and simplify this model a bit. You notice that the gear is rather large and it has rather complex shapes for the gear teeth and, and the slots and that would require a lot of meshing. So we'd like to reduce this model to make it faster and not only because we're going to have to solve for a number of angular positions but when we're trying to optimize the sensor, we're going to be varying parameters in the sensor. So you can quickly see you're going to have a huge number of models to solve. So one of the things that occurs immediately is that the way this gear is constructed, the teeth are straight. And we could have a symmetry plane that cuts through the gear and the sensor and the coils. And that would reduce the size of our model by half. And we'll show you how to do that just by opening another model. 